Hey guys, it's Julie with Julie's Designs. Today is a DIY for resale video where I show you what I made and how much I'm going to sell it for. And if I have a detailed video of exactly how I made the item, I will put the link to that video in the description below. So if it's something you love and want to recreate, you can go watch that tutorial. Now I know I'm moving, but until I am kicked out of this house, I am going to continue to create items and work through my stash. So I was at my home in Louisiana this week and I made a good bit of stuff, I think, and it was so fun, y'all. I'm gonna have a hard time stopping because I just love doing this kind of stuff. I'm just gonna grab some stuff and start showing y'all what I made this week. So I had two of these little olive branches left. So I just went ahead and made some cute little olive branch trees. I did this one with the ticking uh, stripe fabric. And y'all, I like love the olive branch tree with the ticking stripe. It's so adorable. So I did this one and then this one with the drop cloth. So cute. You could put a stamp or something on here if you wanted and that would also look adorable but i just decided to leave them plain i love this this it is this getting y'all ready for fall is anybody starting to create stuff for fall i love i love this year round but it definitely has some fall vibes to it and i'm gonna sell these for 14 dollars and i do have a video on how to make these so cute i love that and then i had this little enamel pot in my garage i was cleaning out my garage i'm like let me put some feet on that and that'll be cute so I just added some, I just mixed up some colors to kind of mimic the blue right here and painted these feet blue. I don't know. I just had these pieces of wood, don't know where they came from, but they look like feet to me. So I threw them on there and I'm going to sell this little enamel planter. That's how I would use it for um, $20. Put a little plant in there would be so cute. And then I have a bunch of these embroidery hoops. Let me see. I have another one back here. And I used the IOD bird mode, which is my favorite, and made some little birds. And then I put some drop cloth in the background. All I did was add some antiquing wax to these birds to just bring out the details. And I love this color palette. I think it's so cute. So I have this little one where I just did some black instead of the antiquing wax. And then... This cute one where I added a little bit of greenery. I just love this color palette. These again are the IOD bird molds and I absolutely love them. And this one I stamped with, I think this was the IOD, IOD typesetting stamp. I stamped on there and look how cute. This one I just kept the birds white. Let me know how y'all feel about this. If y'all like it or not. Then I had some more rusty cans. I had three of them. So I'm like, let me finish these up. I use the bird molds again and I love these. So what I do is I let the can rust and then I put the bird on it. Then I put a coat of antiquing wax on the whole thing and it just turns down, tones down the orangey of the rust and just makes it look, you know, like more vintage, more brown, not like that bright orange color. So pretty. I love this one look how pretty so the big one is i'm gonna sell for 30 dollars, and the small ones i'm gonna sell for 18 and i just love these so cute you could even put these together as a little set i love love these i made those before and they sold really really well so you finish your paint can and you just throw it out in the weather and let it rust and you can turn it into the most beautiful piece of decor I do have a video on how to make those as well. And then I had some of these cypress posts that I still needed to cut up to make, you know, cute little risers. And these, I'm pretty sure I just put some antiquing wax on them. Not antiquing wax, I'm sorry. Some white wax on them. And so this one's $14. It has lots of pretty colors going on. But... I wanted to mute it a little bit like it had too many colors going on so I just that's why I added the white wax to kind of mute it down and then I made this one I felt like this one kind of needed a top see you got the little holes and everything these are so pretty look how good they look with white and then you can just put use them as a riser put some greenery or something on top of them basically a big candlestick is what they are 
So I was just kind of grabbing stuff and trying to finish it. And then I had this little basket and it already had foam in it, but it didn't have any floral. But I felt like it was kind of dark and out of date. So I put some white wax on it and then I added a little ticking stripe around it. And then I added some greenery. Look how cute this came out. I love this. And I'm going to sell this for only $12. I love how that came out. I was just grabbing stuff and I'm like, we're doing something with it. <laughs> Here's another riser that I made. This one is 24 inches long. So this is just a piece of wood I had in the shop. I added some feet to it. This is a perfect size to put like in a bathroom to have all your stuff, um, you know, so it has a place to land and keep it kind of organized or in your kitchen or whatever. That's what I love about risers is that it just gives your stuff a place to go. So it's functional and it looks good as well. And I'm going to sell this one for $30. And then I made two little spindle ladders. This one, I put it together, all the pieces were wood. And then I put the antiquing wax on it just to bring all the brown tones to cut together. And this one I'm gonna sell for $22. How cute is this? People use it to put like little tea towels on or you can hang up in the bathroom and put a bigger towel down here or just simply put a wreath on it, but super cute. And then I made this one with a little bit bigger spindles and I painted this one in uh, Sweet Pickens, Sweetie Jane. I've painted a few things in Sweetie Jane and it sewed right away. And I didn't try to help this one along with crackling. Um, so it didn't really crackle, but it's still very pretty. I just wanted to paint it and see what, hap what would happen to the paint. But I love this color and I love the flat like very flat finish that the milk paint gives you so I just distressed a little bit and that was it I wouldn't have minded if it would crackle a little bit but that's okay it's okay and then I made a few breadboards I have I still have a good bit of this pecky cypress left where it has all these holes and stuff in it it's a, a fungus that gets into the wood and creates this look it's very popular around here and I just finished my breadboards off with a little jute twine and a little bit of greenery. This one is 14 inches and it would be 14, 14 inches would be $20. And I have a few of them. I didn't get to finish pricing all of them, but I just finished a whole board, cut them into different sizes. And as you can see, like I, I just draw out each individual board so all of my breadboards, the handles look a little bit differently because they're all just custom done. Like this one right here had more pecky at the top, so I made a wider handle and then I felt like this one needed a longer handle. So it just depends on the wood. Um, and I find that makes all my breadboards look different if they all have a different handle, which you do is I have a video on this as well, but you cut out one side and then you take it and you flip it and you draw the other side that way it always looks even no matter what kind of top you have so cute these look good like this as a little riser as well i absolutely love this tray i made one of these on a video a few weeks ago and this was the rest of the board that i had left so i just went ahead and made a second one the one in a, i made in the video sewed already and I was, I had some stuff on the side that I was trying to keep to do this DIY for resale video, but my customers kept coming and buying my little hoard that I had on the side. So luckily I was able to keep a few things for this video because my customers kept buying it all. They saw it over in the corner and they're like, that's for sale. And I'm like, I guess. <laughs> okay. This breadboard I love. It's like this pretty grayish blue color and I put a little bit of lavender on it actually this one I'm keeping for myself because a customer bought some stuff on my cabinets in my kitchen and this filled up that spot perfectly until another customer comes along and decides to buy it off my shelf the back is pretty too is black and it has this 30 right here I love I love how thin this one is it looks really really good over my cabinets very pretty see 
It looks good with my walls. I love this one. This one is made out of Cypress. And if I was to sell this one, it would be $40. It is 22 inches by 16 inches. I always write the measurements on my pieces as well. Like I'll put how high something is or long something is because customers always ask that. So that way I don't have to go back and remeasure. It's already on the tag. So I had a few little bench bottoms left from that video I made where I turned bar stools into benches. So I went ahead and finished those up. This is live edge cypress on this one. So pretty. So I put the antiquing, this was a newer piece of cypress. So I put the antiquing wax on it and I put a few coats of the polyacrylic men wax in a flat finish and the bottom I just did white and distressed it. And I think this is so cute. Somebody's one of my customers will love this so much. And I'm selling this bench for $35. Absolutely adorable. I love this. And then this bench, like I said, I was just grabbing stuff and putting it together and trying to work through the things I have left. And I had this big pizza pan. I bought it because it was like really aged. And when I find a pan that's like really aged and kind of nice looking the way it is, I always pick them up because it's hard to recreate that. So I've been having this piece of pan for who knows how long, but I thought it was a perfect size for this little stool. And then what I did was I just added a layer of the antiquing wax on it. And that way it brought all the tones together once again. And I think this would be so cute with some little plants and stuff on it. Isn't that adorable? Oops. Look how cute. You do a little vignette right here. I don't know what y'all think about this. Does it look like a pizza pan or does it look like a cute little bench? Love it. Oh, and this one I'm only selling for $25 because literally all I did was glue this together and then put a layer of antiquing wax on it. You know, it's not like Cypress or any kind of expensive wood. So I just priced that one for $25. And then I have one of these left. If it doesn't sell, it, it won't hurt my feelings because I love it so much. These cloches that I made in a video a few weeks ago, this one I'm selling for $26. I made three of them. No, I made four of them, three of them sold. This one I've been like hoarding in the corner to do this video oh love 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 that and then i have one of these oyster jars left these i sell for 35 dollars, and i have a video on how to make these as well like i said y'all don't forget to check the description um for the links to all these videos so you can see exactly how i made all of these pieces and the last thing I have is these beautiful prints. I love this so much. So a few months ago at an estate sale, I thrifted this handmade paper. It was actually my son's art teacher. He had her for a few years and unfortunately she passed away and she had an estate sale. And I bought this handmade paper and then I used the IOD sprig stamp. Then I glued it to the mat. So there's no glass or anything and I painted the frame white. So it's like a very muted look, but so pretty. I'm actually keeping this one because I definitely want to keep one of these because she made the paper. I love this so, so much. This is just totally my style, which I'm, I know I made all this stuff, but sometimes I get really excited about some of the pieces I made and this is one of them. So this one's like a little bit of the darker handmade paper and this one too i like how thick this paper is and it's still you know there's a contrast but it's still a very muted look and then i ran out of those size frames so i did a little bit of bigger one and i like this size as well you just paint the frame white and then you have a nice white mat and then you glue this on here i think i used hot glue for this and this is so cute just like a pretty like i said muted look but absolutely adorable Lots of character in this one little piece. I love this so much. All right, guys, I think that is everything that I created this week. Y'all make sure to leave a comment below and let me know what was your favorite thing that I created today. I think mine is these frames that I just showed y'all. They are just so cute, so my style. I absolutely love these. And don't forget in the description below, I'll have a link 
if I have a step-by-step -step tutorial to any of these pieces that I created in case you want to create them for yourself. Now I have to go because I have to get the kids up and get them in the car because we are about to head to our other house in Mississippi. So I'm sorry if my energy level seemed a little bit low for this video. It is very early in the morning because I wanted to get this video filmed before we left and show y'all everything I created while we were in Louisiana this week. I had so much fun working in my shop and getting some stuff done. Like I said, I was just picking stuff up and just figuring out something to do with it because all of it got to get done. All right, guys, y'all have a wonderful day and I will see y'all in the next video. Thanks for watching and give this video a big